yeah, yeah. Today, we're talking about five players that I have ranked significantly higher than ADP. All right, we're talking about average draft position where these guys are typically going in drafts and guys that I have ranked way before them. So we are reaching up a little bit for these guys in drafts as of right meow. If you want our rankings, they are available on bdge.co. But the easiest and the cheapest way for you to get access to our rankings as well as our entire football draft guide for you this year is by going to PrizePix, prizepix.com, or using the link to go straight to their app in the App Store, whatever shit that you're using on your phone. It'll take you right there. And if you deposit $10 for the first time on their app and you use promo code BDGE, you're getting a 100% deposit match on their app to play with throughout the preseason. We're going to get some fucking locks at the end of this video for y'all tonight. And you're getting access to the draft guide. So go over to Prize Picks, go hit our code, tuck your shirts in. Flex your traps. Stop yelling. First guy up on this list, and it's easy. It's easy to love him now. But where was you when we were serving it? Where was you when he was on the must draft list that came out in the draft guide? Last week, Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. I have him up at 16, and I think I'm going to move him even higher after last night's preseason game, but I had him here before that. I have him six spots higher than ADP. So right now, he's going at the back of the second, early third round turn. You ain't going to get him there anymore, and you shouldn't want to wait to get him there anymore because Saquon is bike fully when it comes to health. All right, I listened to the Dr. Chow podcast, former Chargers doctor. He had Evan Silva on his podcast. It was a great episode. Talked about how Saquon is fully back. He's not worried about his injuries whatsoever. We saw in the preseason game, man, this is a new offense with Brian Dayball there. They've got an upgraded offensive line. The emphasis is offseason. Everything out of camp in New York had been to get Saquon the ball in space, target him, let him rip. The first pre, I didn't know how bad I needed to see this man on a football field, but I needed it bad. And we saw it last night, and he looked great. Saquon played on the very first drive with the starters for the Giants last night. 12 snaps. The only running back out there. Saw five touches on the 12 snaps, one of them being a target in the red zone. More importantly, ran seven routes on on 12 snaps, guys. He's going to be so involved in the passing game. We know what he was pre all the injuries, 2,000 yards from scrimmage as a rookie. This is going to be a huge bounce back year for Saquon. Do not let him fall in your draft. I won't spend a lot of time on this guy because nearly every video I have put out this summer has been about Michael fucking Pittman. He will end up on every single team I can get my hands on him in. I have him ranked 25th overall. That is the 301. That is 11 spots higher than ADP. If you have him ranked that highly, you are getting him and you should be targeting him in every draft with Matt Ryan coming over, monster upgrade. We saw what Carson Wentz did with Michael Pittman. Now, look at what Matt Ryan's done with his wide receiver one in every single offense that he's had with Atlanta, dating back to the great Roddy White, then Julio Jones, then the small time that he had with Calvin Ridley. Matt Ryan's going to be rejuvenated behind a much better offensive line with a really good passing or a really good run game that now he can use the play action off of. They've got nothing else there in Indianapolis besides Michael Pittman. I also really like Paris Campbell, who I'm way ahead of ADP on Paris Campbell is a guy that if I don't somehow get Pittman based on my rankings, which is nearly impossible, I'm going to own a lot of Paris Campbell this year as well. But Pittman's a dude that I have ranked way higher than ADP, way higher than expert consensus, way higher than fucking Snoop Dogg. All right. Michael Pittman every damn time. We have this middle pack of wide receivers, like all these fourth, fifth round wide receivers. I like then most of the dead zone running backs at this range. So I have Mike Williams 19 spots higher at pick 32 than ADP. All right. So Mike Williams is a dude who I think has a real chance to overtake Keenan Allen as a wide receiver one in this offense. He's coming off a really big year where he set career highs and targets, receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns, all that kind of good shit. We've seen Keenan Allen kind of drop off a little bit in a few things that you need to keep your eye on. His yards per route run number has dropped year over year over year, I think like three or four years running. We also look at Matt Harmon's reception perception, and while Keenan Allen is still a very good route runner, his you know separation versus man coverage and press coverage has dwindled, and it's no longer in that elite tier. It's no longer the Stefan Diggs. He's getting a little old. He's an OG now, all right? And thus, his body will start operating that way. So do I think Mike Williams is a pure separator like Keenan Allen? No, but they just resigned him to an absolute fatty this offseason, and they have a very clear path to giving him a ton of looks, and this is an offense that's really high paced, really high pass volume, and Justin Herbert will have all day to allow Mike Williams to get down the field because his offensive line is fucking awesome as well. Mike Williams is a dude that if I go running back heavy, running back heavy, running back heavy, you're a super flex league quarterback, running back, quarterback, running back, tight end. Mike Williams, you can get in like the fourth, fifth round as your wide receiver one. Perfectly fucking happy with that. Right behind him, and y'all might 
find this as a surprise, but I have DJ Moore up at 33. Now, this is just in line with expert consensus, but ADP has him 13 spots lower. DJ Moore is a guy who I made a video about, our most popular video this summer, seven players to let your idiot league mates draft in 2022. I'll link that one down below. And I had DJ Moore listed in there, but that was pre-Baker Mayfield coming over. Baker Mayfield's going to be the quarterback in Carolina. I think that raises everything for DJ Moore. He's slightly, he's a, he's just a better version of Sam Darnold, all right? And DJ Moore has ripped off 1,150 receiving yards or 1150 total yards year after year after year the touchdown totals have been very low obviously four 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 it's fucking outrageous at this point but you know you want to spin the wheel you want to play a little roulette this is a this is i don't like when people are like oh they're due for positive touchdown regression with no actual reasoning behind it now we have a reason. He has a better quarterback, okay? So the Carolina offensive line, I think, is a little bit underrated. I think Baker Mayfield as an upgrade to Sam Darnold. Like, we've seen Baker Mayfield be accurate in the NFL. Just because both of them have really good draft capital does not mean they've both shown good accuracy. Sam Darnold has never been an accurate quarterback. He came out of USC very young. He was very raw. He was a weird prospect that got overpicked. He got picked really early because people saw the potential. But with Baker Mayfield, we saw the potential come to fruition at the NFL level. Will he ever recapture it? I don't know, but I would much rather bet on DJ Moore with Baker than DJ Moore with Cam or Sam Darnold or any of those fucking bullshit quarterbacks. So I actually like DJ Moore at the end of the third round, early fourth round now, as opposed to what my viewpoint was prior to the Baker Mayfield trade. And you guys have heard me talk at nauseum about these other mid-round wide receivers. I have Cortland Sutton at 38 overall, so he's 19 spots higher than ADP. Same thing with Allen Robinson up at 46. He's 19 spots higher than ADP. So it, a lot of these are at expense of the running backs. So I have guys like David Montgomery, 21 spots lower than ADP, and I'm going to continue to move his ass down. Rashad Bateman, 26 spots higher. Elijah Moore, 21 spots higher. Chase Edmonds is a guy I have 23 spots higher than ADP, up at 68. So you're looking at like a, a sixth round pick in my rankings, and this is one quarterback leagues right now. But he's a guy that you've continuously been able to get in, in best ball drafts this summer in the eighth, ninth round. And I think he's going to be the lead back there in Miami. They have Sony Michelle. They have Raheem Mostert. Who knows if Mostert's ever going to be healthy? Michelle will be a guy who gets some early down work, but this is an offense that I think will rely on quick hitting passes. A lot of a lot of stuff going on in the screen game. I think it's just going to be Hill, Waddle, Chase, Hill, Waddle, Chase, Hill, Waddle, Chase. Will he get the goal line work? I don't know, but I he would have to do something really stupid in order to. He's the guy that got paid. He's the guy that they signed really quickly as soon as they got the new scheme and Mike McDaniel's in town. Clearly the RB1, getting paid like it. He would have to do something really bad, really stupid, or just get injured in order to not finish in this offense as the running back one that have an, uh, an improved offensive line. Teron Armstead obviously coming over and will anchor the offensive line, a couple of the McGovern, a couple other pieces that they're not great yet, but they're definitely on the way up. And Chase Edmonds is in the swing of moving on the way up as well. So for me, ranking that dude this far ahead of ADP, wildly clear as is my brain, vision, heart, when I'm wearing my Felix Grays. Y'all know I love Felix Gray. Been wearing these bad boys since way before they started sponsoring the videos. So when I pitch them to you, it's from a very genuine place. Felix Gray offers blue light blocking glasses, okay? And over the last few years, that has become a very popular product or topic of discussion, light blocking it from your screen. And I'm a fucking weirdo. I listen to a lot of podcasts about fantasy and marketing, but also like biohacking is a weird uh, passion of mine. And biohacking, you know, they talk about like nut uh, nutrition and they talk about fitness and all that, how longevity, how to live longer and be healthier. Lighting is one of the very, very important pillars of uh, what people in the biohacking world talk about. It's kind of crazy, actually. Didn't think it was important. But when I started wearing these, like instantly the strain on my eyes went away as well as like my sleep started getting way fucking better because this blocks blue light, it blocks the the, uh, the light coming from your screen, okay? And that's what keeps you up at night. If you're someone who scrolls fucking TikTok until your eyes bleed at night, which is what I fucking start to do now, these things are a godsend, okay? So go over to Felix Gray, use promo code BDGE15 and you're going to get 15% off your purchase plus free shipping. So these block the blue light from the screens, computer, fucking camera, monitor, cell phone, TV, whatever you're doing at night, you need to have these on. When it blocks the light, your body's not receiving any light. So it's saying, okay, we could start to produce melatonin. I'm going to go to sleep easier, better, faster, stronger, bigger, harder. All right. 
Felix Gray, that should be your slogan. Bigger, faster, stronger, better, harder when it comes to your sleep. All right, go check out Felix Gray. Link will be in the description. Thank you. I love you. Let's move on to the next guy. Chris Olave is another dude that I have way higher than ADP. I have him 35 spots higher than ADP, all the way up at 82. So you're talking about, I think that's the back of the, uh, the seventh round. Let's take out the fucking TI-84. Where art thou? You're not even here right now. Whatever. Uh, Chris Olave, up at 82, 35 spots higher than consensus, 33 spots higher than ECR. So I'm just way above everything and everyone here. Um, and I, I think a lot of this has to do with whether or not Michael Thomas is going to be playing. We've seen some Twitter clips. We've heard chatter that he looks great. I'm still fucking really worried about whatever is going on with Michael Thomas, man. I feel like it's one of those situations where he's getting old enough to the point where I need to see it before I believe it right now. And if everything goes perfectly smooth from here on out, every report is fucking golden. Everything is that Michael Thomas looks phenomenal. I will start to ride that wave a little bit more. But for right now, I think Olave is going to immediately be the best deep threat on New Orleans. And I like that pairing with Jameis Winston. And in that podcast I mentioned earlier, he was talking about how if he had to put money on it, he would say by the end of the year, Michael Thomas ends up closer to the wide receiver three on his team than the wide receiver one in New Orleans because he thinks Olave is going to be the guy there too. So I'm, I'm in lockstep there. I have recently moved Julio Jones up. Uh, and now I am 48 spots higher than ADP, just lagging behind a little bit. Sometimes the data in the ADP and the ECR takes a little bit to, you know, move up and move over or whatever. So I have Julio up. I mean, it's at 103. So he's like a 10th round pick for me right now. I just don't know what the weapon situation is there with Godwin coming back and no Gronk. And, you know, we have Mike Evans, who I absolutely fucking love, regardless of whether or not Julio's there. Russell Gage is hurt now. Julio, who knows? Maybe Julio recaptures a little bit of that form for like eight weeks or something like that. And I think that might be worth it enough to draft him, you know, above where he's going. So that was like eight or nine or 10 players or something like that that I just wanted to rip off to you guys quickly because some of you guys have your drafts coming up and I think the best way for y'all to stay on top of that again would be to go grab our draft guide available on bdg.co but the cheapest and the easiest way to do it is by going to prizepicks.com depositing $10 on there for the first time using promo code BDGE hats in store soon. And when you do that, they're going to give you a hundred percent deposit match. They are going to give you access to our draft guide absolutely for free. They'll get our rankings. You'll get the preseason weekly update articles after all the preseason games happen. They, it's fucking beautiful. I love them. I love you. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.